Good morning, and thank you again for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Welcome to church. Before mm -hmm. church, we got Sabbath school. That's and right. Sabbath school is just a nice time to study God's Word and learn a little bit more about the beauty of God and all the wonderful things He has done for us. Mm -hmm. But again, as we traditionally do before we get into the lesson study, which is kind of just, you know, borrowing some principles from last week's lesson on That's creation right. and just bringing that into something grander and just hang tight here but we're gonna go to mission story two-year-old denisa loved going to school she loved playing with her best friend timea but when timea played with the other little girls and boys denisa felt sad she went to the corner and cried loudly wow this happened every day Wah! What could make little Denisa happy? Denisa and her best friend, Timea, were always the first to arrive at their school in Romania. Timea's mother was the teacher, and she picked Denisa up at her house every morning on the way to school. One day, Denisa and Timea arrived as usual before any other children. The two girls played a fun game of hide and seek. They hid under a big blue and green table. They hid inside the bathroom. They hid behind chairs. Then they played with modeling clay and colored pictures. After a while, other children started arriving and Timea played with them. Denisa didn't like that. She wanted all the attention for herself. She went to a corner of the room, sat on the floor, and began to bawl. Wah! The teacher went to her and hugged her. You have no reason to cry, the teacher said. It is better to play together and not just with Timea. Denisa stopped crying. She liked it when the teacher paid attention to her. Let's pray together, the teacher said. Denisa knew how to kneel and pray because all the children knelt and prayed for worship every morning. She immediately got on her knees. The teacher also knelt and prayed first. Our Father, Please help Denisa to calm down and to understand that it is better to play with the other children and not only with Timea. Denisa prayed to stop crying. Then the teacher asked Denisa to help prepare some activities for the children. After a while, Denisa joined a group of children and began to play with them. They made wooden puzzles of birds, frogs, grasshoppers, butterflies, and goldfish. Denisa especially liked a puzzle of a little bird with a yellow breast and brown and green wings. The teacher spent a lot of time praying with Denisa during that year. Things got easier during the second year. After a while, Denisa started going to church with Timea and the teacher on Sabbath. The teacher taught the Sabbath school lesson. Denisa liked praying in the class and learning more about Jesus. Today, Denisa is 10 and she still prays a lot. In Sabbath school, she always is the first to raise her hand to volunteer. Denisa and Timea are still best friends. They play together almost every day. Part of your 13th Sabbath offering will help open a school and after school center in Romania where children can learn to pray just like Denisa did at the Adventist school. Thank you for planning a generous offering. Welcome back to our Sabbath School lesson study. Um, this week's lesson is the Sabbath and the end. We're happy to be here again, but before we start our study, Peter, could you lead us in prayer? Sure, let's pray. Generally, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word again this morning. And we just ask that you would send your spirit to be with us here as we open your word and we discover a few more things about you Amen. today. Uh, guide and bless our YouTube audience and whatever challenges and uh, things they may be facing in life right, right now. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. You know, just before we get into the lesson, that reminded me, you know, I'm going to put throw up this because usually later, sometimes when we get into the complicated topics, I throw up your email at the end. Okay. But, you know, if you have something that you want us to pray for, throw it up, uh, send us an email, pastor at Um, Is that all? 
I mean, they, any questions you have as well, <laughs> send right. it there. So what's our memory text for this week, Pastor? Ephesians 3, 9, and it says, And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Important text. I think we had that text last, last week. Because there was that, that word, fellowship of the mystery. Mm -hmm. So again, we're talking a little bit here at the beginning about creation. But um, I thought it was interesting, the lesson put it this way, the essence of humanity's dignity is a common creation. Mm. Beautiful. So I guess that broken down would be, you know, like my wife is pregnant right now. So everyone from that baby girl uh -huh. to um, maybe there's a quadriplegic uh -huh. um, at, in, in, in your friend circle. You know, it's some teenager who's had some injuries and is dealing with some things. Maybe it's a special needs individual. Mm -hmm. that that you know but even to like a grandfather who has alzheimer's right you know you have all these different individuals and collectively you have this dignity of humanity mm -hmm. uh, i like what acts 17 puts it says god who made the world and everything in it since he is lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands and he has made them from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth amen so shared heritage share heritage and and basically um family and, and i think that's a concept that sometimes we we misunderstand where maybe even we feel like we're family because we go to the same church, we belong to the same, um, you know, group that believes in a certain way. Mm. But I think we, we have to start thinking differently in that, you know, my Buddhist neighbor or my atheist neighbor, he's family too. Mm -hmm. and, and we have one father who created us all um, for different reasons. You know, they believe differently than I do but I should not, because of that, push them away. In fact, I should draw them to know our Heavenly Father. And this is like people groups too. That's right. So it doesn't mean, it, you hear on the news sometimes about the Shiites or the Sunnis. Correct. And um, there's always wars and conflicts going on between them. Or you hear about various races and mm -hmm. the challenges faced there. But we are all one, one humanity. That's right. That's what we are. So you're one of a kind creation. Pastor Sam is one That's of a kind right. creation. I'm one of a kind creation. And it's just such an immense uh, thing. But bringing that whole concept of humanity together... You know, there's the there's the concept that in the eighteen late eighteen hundreds, um, an individual from Europe wrote a few books on some travels, and now we we know it as as Dar Charles Darwin and his various books that he put together. And his theory was what like you have some type of primordial soup and. This grows into a little creature, and then this mm. creature over millions of years cr turns into this creature, etc. Um, but if we if we take a step back from that and look back at our favorite verse for this mm -hmm. semester, uh, Revelation or quarter, I guess, yeah, fourteen seven. So mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, "Fear God and give glory to Him, mm -hmm. for the hour of His judgment has That's come." Fun. Worship him who made the heaven, the earth, sea, and the springs of water. Mm. So it doesn't matter if you read Genesis 1, 1, mm -hmm. or all the way in Revelation. You have this, this beautiful theme of creation. Amen. And maybe, Peter, you could also share with our audience um, the, the link to the Geoscience Research Institute. Right here. Mm, and that would be nice uh, for them to have also other resources There's a lot of great videos you mm -hmm. can follow up with okay and different things um, 
and they also have you know they'll point you in the right direction they, mm -hmm. they reference other ministries resources right. as well uh, Romans 14 10 could you could you sure. read that one now now this is something because we're all created and there's this this beautiful God who um, has created us and now that's the hour of his judgment but what does this text say here Romans 14 10 says but why do you judge your brother or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Wow. So it looks like the judgment seat of Christ um, levels the plane for everyone. We all come as, as sinners or we come before God as forgiven sinners. You have another text in, <laughs> in Matthew, you know, judge not that you be not judged. Yes. So, with, with texts like this, mm -hmm. um, and I also want to pick up this other one, James 2. Yes. James 2, 8 through 13, it says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the mm. scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin mm. and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For a judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Okay, let's. Uh, we've we've had these three texts: Romans, Matthew, mm -hmm. James. Um, what's going on here? So you have a, a very clear message coming from these three passages: James, author of the book of James; Romans, written by Paul; the book of Revelation, written by John. But they all basically present the same theme: that we will be judged. And basically, at that moment, we are the same. There's no difference um, in, in who gets what. Um, the only difference is, have we accepted Jesus as our attorney? Do we follow his counsel? That's what's going to make the difference. And do we keep his commandments? Do we keep his commandments? Correct. So we are being judged by the law of God, which is the same for everyone. And that whole love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the basic principle, love. Love for God and love for your neighbor. So with James 2, mm -hmm. that one really speaks to me because mm. um, that addresses a lot of the geopolitical issues that's we have right, right now. That um, speaks to it, yes. If we can't get along with our neighbor, love our neighbor, care for our neighbor, um, we, there's an issue because if there we is. do it says you do well mm -hmm. but what what is this partiality and I think this partiality is that sometimes we um, treat people based on you know maybe they have some type of affinity with us on hmm. um, the same country or same language or or same same education or same cultural background and then those who don't fit maybe what we um, are used to then, then we consider them less. And that happens anywhere you go in the world. It doesn't just happen here in the US, but you can go to any country in the world and, and people um, will look at you differently if you speak a different language or if you speak with a different accent. And even in the same country where it's the same language, you have these regional differences. And, and I, I, I know this, this from, from someone telling me that, that in, in a country and I won't mention the name of the country but it was just a little river that divided both villages mm. and so they did speak a little different from each other yeah and same people same language just you know maybe a different word for something or a different accent as they spoke mm. they could not understand each other so it was like you're from there we're from over here and let's keep it that way wow, and that's yeah. that seems to be human nature but the Bible tells us no we we should not treat others differently just because they are different. We should tr treat them with love and care just like God loves us and cares for us. So what does judgment imply about 
these issues of accountability and responsibility in relation to some of these texts we just read? That's a great question because judgment implies um, a critical moment has come, okay. a critical hour, as the lesson points out. And, and this means that something needs to be done and a decision needs to be made either by the judge or by the accused or defendant, as, as, as we can call someone who is in a court setting. And, and I think this also is a, an opportunity to reveal um, the facts. And that's basically what heaven is doing, is exposing, revealing to the world God's amazing love for humanity, but also exposing the good and the bad. So Genesis 2, 1 to 3 mm -hmm. says, Thus the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he mm -hmm. rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God had created and made. Amen. So, yeah, we've been talking about the judgment. I'm going to take us back here to the creation a little bit. I think the creation story can get convoluted mm. in society today because there's, you know, the issue of um, wanting to make six literal days mm -hmm. um, a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But texts like this kind of bring everything into perspective. Mm -hmm. And... Um, of course, read Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Mm -hmm. It talks about the fourth commandment, which is, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger, who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. I think a lot of people, when they get to the Ten Commandments, they, you know, they read it through mm -hmm. and they, they get the elements of it. But I feel like the last half of it is some of the most important aspect of this specific commandment. You know, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. So, um, to me, that speaks literal. It does, and it um, goes back to the creation because story. Because nothing about the Ten Commandments is prophetic. That's right. <laughs> it's just, here's, it's here's what's what. Stating facts. And, but I always love how it references back. And, and some people mm -hmm. are like, oh, well, the commandments are done away with at the cross and different things like that. Um, okay, but... The, the most beautiful passage for the Sabbath for me is back to that Genesis 2, verses 1 to it 3. Is. You know, everything is, is finished. God is, has created this beautiful planet. Everything is just perfect. More than, you, think, you think of perfect, whatever it is, it was like better than that. And yeah. it's just like the euphoria out of this. But he blesses the seventh day and he sanctifies it because... In it, he rested from all his work, which he had created and made. And that verse 3 of Genesis 2 also screams to me, in a good way, of course, um, the, the literalness of that. Yes, and, and what's beautiful is that there's an a, a author by the name of Abraham Heschel, and he wrote a book on the Sabbath, where he also speaks of this day, particular day, um, as a temple in time like a like a like a, 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 a an, an opportunity to again um, go back and look at what God has made hmm. and what's beautiful about the fourth commandment too is that it tells us the name of the person who created the Lord yeah yes it gives us basically a, a title where he's the creator of heaven and earth and it tells us also that he did this in six days. Therefore, the Sabbath, which is the seventh day, is the day on which he wants you and me to worship him. All right, so today we're bouncing around a little bit. We mm -hmm. talked about a little bit about the judgment, then we jumped back into creation. Correct. 
Um, why is this relevant mm -hmm. in context? Mm -hmm. Like, why is the relevancy of creation, the liter literal days of creation, why is that relevant to the judgment and this whole context of Revelation 47, etc.? I think the, the, the lesson points out, and it makes a really nice, you know, it, it presents this idea of because God is our creator, and he has given you and me and us the, the, the privilege of making decisions and choosing. Um, we are accountable before God for our actions. We are accountable before God because of our thoughts. We are accountable before God of our feelings. And he's given us this responsibility of not only enjoying what he has created in nature but also taking care of it okay and so judgment is the moment where god then can reveal to the rest of the universe if we did what we were supposed to or not and i really and in context of because we're talking about sabbath mm -hmm. here um i really like how revelation brings up the themes of creation right. because basically it kind of just goes back to some of these verses, mm -hmm. whether it's Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, talking about the Sabbath, but it uses the same language mm -hmm. about create the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. and the sea. And um, it's just a good reminder of the Creator, but it also alludes back to the texts that talk about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, one other one that I didn't, uh, I just mentioned is Deuteronomy. Let me read that here. Uh, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is in within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And remember that you are a slave in the land mm. of Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. I, I like that last verse because it, it, you know, it's talking about the Israelites and they're mm -hmm. coming out of Egypt, but to me, that's like, I've brought you mm -hmm. out of the land of sin. Correct. I've, I've brought you out. Of, I've brought you out of uh, a bad place that wasn't good for you, mm -hmm. and now you have that opportunity um, to take my outstretched arm mm -hmm. and let me lead you. And um, show you sabbath and what mm, sabbath and is all about. rest basically and, and i think that that's a great point you're making peter because many times we see the sabbath connected to creation and we mm -hmm. can see why because of what the fourth commandment says there in exodus and the story of creation in genesis chapter one and two but this idea of of also redemption mm -hmm. and, and how god has delivered us from sin how he's delivered us out of egypt brought us out of egypt and, and the Sabbath is a reminder of that, too, that we can find rest in Jesus, that we can find our forgiveness of sins in Jesus, that we can find um, peace in Jesus. And, and that's, I think, the, the beauty of this day that God has set aside for us to worship Him is so that we do not forget, one, that He's the Creator, and two, that He's our Redeemer. The lesson says, Scripture calls us to rest in His love, and care each Sabbath. Sabbath is a symbol of rest, not works, of grace, not legalism, of assurance, not condemnation, of depending upon Him, not upon ourselves. Each Sabbath we rejoice in His goodness and praise Him for the salvation that can be found only in Christ. So since we are on the topic of Sabbath, mm -hmm. and since I did kind of re reference mm -hmm. one of the arguments about like nailing it to the cross, mm -hmm. what do you say to someone who's like, well, really, Sabbath is just kind of like one of those elements that is not really important. Jesus put away some of that stuff. What, what, 
what did Jesus put away at the cross? Um, I just think that's like one of those things yes. that since I <laughs> opened that uh, can of worms, Good. let's address it. I think what he nailed that on the cross was basically the penalty of sin, which is death. And what he did is he took our place. He is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. So, and when it's talking about ordinances, what is that? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. putting away the ordinances, etc.? So, so in, in the Torah, the five books of Moses, um, you do have ordinances that God gave to the children of Israel to remind them of, you know, the, the consequences of sin. And um, among those ordinances, you do have um, a sacrificial system. Okay. That was very visible, very palpable. You brought a lamb. It was killed. The blood was used to um, be sprinkled on, on inside the holy place, on the curtain um, that led to the most holy place. And so these ordinances that God gave regarding um, the, the, the sanctuary were pointing to Jesus. And we referenced that when we were talking about the time prophecies recently. Right. We had the 1260, and then there was the 70-week prophecy. So if you missed that, just get back a lesson mm -hmm. or two. We referenced that. Sorry, there was a beautiful bird over here. I was just oh, like watching wow. over here. It's great to be in God's yeah, creation. Amen. But um, the amazing thing is um, all these, these, these timelines line up, and then you have... Um, Jesus making that sacrifice. That's right. And so he's the fulfillment. At that point, you remember the the veil of the temple was torn. Correct. And that just opened up a whole new reality for humanity. Correct. Um, and at that point, you know, uh, Christianity began going to all people groups, not right. just uh, God's people there at the time, the Jewish nation. Um, it opened it up so that. Jews could be God's people, Muslims could be God's people, Correct. Greeks could be God's people, Romans could be God's Everyone. people. And so like they could, and yeah, I'm not sure what all the religious groups were at that time, mm -hmm. but throughout Christianity as various groups um, popped up, whether it was Buddhism or any of these mm -hmm. other, uh, Shintoism, um, all of these people now have that opportunity and they can have that advocate with Jesus they Amen. don't need to go to the priest Amen. make that sacrifice make that confession they can directly appeal to God and so that is where I just to close off the con concept of the ordinances mm -hmm. you know Christ nailing that to the cross but and then what's interesting also is this idea yeah. of maybe at the cross because of you know death and blood once again um, God is basically reestablishing his covenant with his people. Yeah, yeah, and this yeah. time, like you mentioned, it's not just the Jews, but this is a universal people. All people now have access to this gift of, of, of salvation. And, and so that happens at the cross. All right. Um, there was another text here. Mm -hmm. uh, Ezekiel uh, 20, verse 12. And if you want to read... Ezekiel 20, verse 20. Okay. I'm so Ezekiel 20, verse 12 says, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me that they may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Amen. And 2020 is similar that says, Hallow my Sabbaths, and they will be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. It's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. So when... Um, you have texts like remember the sabbath day it's to keep that covenant going that's what it is exactly and what's interesting the book of revelation also points to a mark okay yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, or mark of the beast mark of the beast and which so is, what what is that unpack that a little bit so in relation to in this. relation to this it's also a covenant that is being made by with the opposite side so it's not like a barcode that I scan. It's not a barcode, Okay, no. so break that down. And and maybe that mark is clearly lawlessness, is going against God's so law. So we're talking about a 
theory versus a physical NFC chip or something like Correct. that. Correct. Okay. And, and it's more of a, a, a way of, of, of even maybe worshiping God. So Instead we of have worshiping a, the Creator, you're worshiping creation. Okay, so we things, have this idols. covenant. Mm -hmm. How is the Mark of the Beast, uh, I don't want to say an anti-covenant, but like an alternative covenant? In that um, you, you demonstrate your loyalty. Okay. And, and basically those who follow God's commandments, keep the Sabbath day, are basically saying we belong to our Creator. And those who don't, who disregard the fourth commandment, also disregard the other nine commandments, they're basically saying we belong to the prince of this world, which is Satan. So, as I remember with that text, we're talking about some type of mark in a hand. Correct. Or in the forehead. Correct. What's the difference there? So it's interesting because the mark on the hand and on the forehead was also the way that God said, I will make a covenant with you. This way you will remember me. Okay. It's going to so by not just your thoughts, but also your actions. So some people could technically have both. And they could take Some yeah. people could have just the thought version. Correct. And some people could just have the hand version. Correct. And what's interesting is that God made a covenant with Noah, for example. Yeah, yeah. And he used a rainbow at mm -hmm. that moment. It was the best way to let not just Noah, but the entire world, I will never again destroy the earth by water. Mm. Um, he made a covenant with his people, with specifically with males, by circumcision. Boom, mm -hmm. you belong to me. Yeah. Then he said, let's do it even clearer here. Let's use the Sabbath as a sign, again, of this special relationship that we have. You belong to me and I will be your God, basically. That's the relationship. And then, um, when it comes to um, the New Testament, you find this covenant called communion, where by partaking of it, basically we're saying, we belong to you, Jesus, we follow you. Or baptism is another sign of mm -hmm. this covenant relationship. So God uses different types of signs just to kind of say, um, you follow these things, you do these things, you belong to me. You do these other things, you belong to someone else. Okay, so Isaiah 65, 17. Actually, could you go to Revelation 21, I verse 1, that. while yes. I'm going to read this one? For behold, I create new heavens mm. and a new earth, mm. and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Revelation and Revelation 21, 1 says... Now I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Okay, so tell me about this, because these are very similar. They're very similar. Isaiah already um, is revealed in his time that God will make everything new again. And the book of Revelation confirms that and says, yes, what Isaiah said, God will still do. It will happen when Jesus comes again. After the thousand years, he will make this earth new again. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. So kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see the picture that we're painting here. And we're using all these markers from the Bible mm -hmm. to paint this picture, but with some type of view and perspective like this, what would Satan be attacking? He would be attacking basically the idea that there is no creator, and that's what we see today, Okay. and there is no redeemer. You're on your own, Peter. I'm on my own. And, and there is no Sabbath. And there is no Sabbath. There is no You gotta no hustle, rest. you gotta just... You gotta work, 24/7. Work, work. Correct. And, and the more you work, uh, the, 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 you'll get ahead, you know, you'll, you'll do get more. more money. Exactly. People will recognize all your gifts and talents, but that goes against what God says in His Word. Mm -hmm. um, Psalms 33, verse 6. Mm-hmm. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Psalms 33, verse 9. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Can you read Hebrews 11, verse 3? I can. 
By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So, do these passages tell us about how God created the world? It does. It tells us that God did things um, visible out of things invisible. And what's so fascinating is that today we get to see some of those invisible things that many weren't able to see centuries before, maybe even um, less than a century before us. But we are able to see what you shared, I think, last week also about this micro universe. Yeah. Yes. And I love it's... the micro universe. <laughs> Someday maybe I'll have a cool microscope. But, yes. Um, I remember my, my grandma was a pathologist oh, and she wow. kind of gifted us one of her old uh, Zeiss mi uh, microscopes. And it oh, was wow. old, but it was just really fantastic. Sorry, there's little bugs around That's out all right. here. A little part of the micro <laughs> universe. <laughs> micro universe. <laughs> uh, but uh, it looks like here the, okay, you're gonna have to help me with this one. You studied Hebrew, I have not. Mm. Hebrew word for day in Genesis one is? Yom. Yom. Yom, that's the, the word. And, and basically anytime you find the word Yom in Hebrew, with a cardinal number, one, two, three, four, five, and that's how it appears, day one, day two. That's how days of the week are named in Hebrew, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's Shabbat. Okay, that's so in this case, Yom is... A 24-hour period. Not a prophetic kind it's of number. It's not a prophetic kind of number, correct. It's okay. a 24-hour period, and even those who, who are not, um, you know, creationists, but they are, um, they understand the Hebrew language, they recognize that's what the Bible is saying. Six yeah. literal days. So at some point you have to decide if you are going to agree with the Bible. Correct. And go along with what the Bible is mm -hmm. saying. And, 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 and I think that, that that's a big, a, it, it brings a lot of implications because if, if you start doubting that part of the Bible, why should you trust anything else? Yeah, if you can erode that, mm -hmm. then it's like... Everything else, what it says about sin, what it says about Jesus, what it says about... There's some great poems, as I've heard people say. It's kind of, it's, you know, Psalms, Proverbs, mm -hmm. is very poetic, it's great, and then like, they don't deal with anything else, you know. It's either a book of mythology or a book of, um, you know, psalms and poems mm -hmm. from the past and something that the lesson i think brings out really nicely is by attacking the sabbath satan is challenging the very heart of god's authority and what could be more effective in destroying the memorial of the six-day creation than denying the reality of the six-day creation mm -hmm. no wonder so many people including christians ignore the seventh day sabbath what a setup for the final deception Um, Revelation 14. Let's go back over Let's there. Let's go back to Revelation 14. I'm going to read Revelation 14, 7. Hopefully by the end of this quarter you're we'll going to have that memorized. But, and then uh, I want you to read verse 9. I'll read verse sure. 12. But it says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made heaven, earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And then a third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So before I read verse 12, yes, can you break down 9, 10, whatever, right there? Because like... Um, We've gone over 14.7 from yes. multiple angles. 14 verse 9, we haven't, we, I, we've referenced it, but we haven't like, delved into it. Um, so this, if correct me if I'm wrong, this is what we were referring to just a couple minutes ago. Correct, that mark. In, in the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. So it's, as we referenced again in a few lessons ago, this is all a battle on worship that is true and and what what you see here again it has to do with a covenant and have we made a covenant with jesus have we decided um to follow him and obey him yeah or 
Do we follow his enemy? And do we worship basically him? How and who you worship. That's right. How and who you worship. That's the issue in the times that we're living in. And Revelation 12 says, here's the patience of the saints. That's right. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So in other words, it describes the kind of people that are on God's side. Yeah. They are the ones who keep the commandments of God. They are the ones who have the faith of Jesus. That is, they follow Jesus wherever he leads them. And they are the ones who also persevere, because it's not easy to be a follower of Jesus. You know, what's interesting about this is you have just, it leads up to this culmination pointing to those keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And it just, to me, it's a peaceful conclusion mm. because, to me, I don't have to worry about the mark of the beast at this point. Mm. It's not something scary. It isn't. It's basically a mindset and a theology mm -hmm. and basically thought pattern to avoid mm -hmm. and if we can avoid that you know as long as you're worshiping the creator and honoring him by keeping his sabbath and the commandments mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about receiving this mark of the beast amen new technology can come out all sorts of things can come out but none of that affects you because that's not what this is it's all a theory and a mindset that ends up bringing down people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when it comes to the Sabbath, again, it, it's, it's a matter of trust. Do we yeah. trust what the Bible says? Do we trust our Creator? And this is what He's asking us to do. Um, so we obey it. Or are we trusting ourselves or someone else and therefore ignoring what God is trying to tell us? Mm. And especially in the times that we're living in, I, I sense, Peter, we, we are coming to a point where it's really hard to trust anyone. Yep. And you look at a lot of these institutions that are failing, that are, you know, basically not trustworthy anymore. And people are looking. Who can they trust? Who can they trust? And we're not here to say to trust me or trust um, someone from, from my church. The idea is let's trust Jesus. Yeah. He's the one who who basically gave it all for us. He's trustworthy. He's, you know, the one we want to honor and give glory to. And, and what we can do is basically point to the one who's helping us right now. And, and that's what the Sabbath message is, is about, is about um, God and recognizing Him as Creator. And basically, no. yeah. No, 2 Thessalonians 2.4 mm -hmm. um, references this kind of this idea mm. um, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or mm. that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God hmm. when you have um, an idea or a theology being pressed upon you by an institution mm -hmm. that kind of adopts this principle um, into a concept of worship mm -hmm. in a certain way mm -hmm. that goes against the golden thread through scripture mm -hmm. check your heart that's right check what's going on yeah, that's right um be very cautious and like the bereans study to show yourself approved mm -hmm. um and you know it doesn't matter if there's an apostle mm -hmm. coming in uh or pastor in mm -hmm. this context um, with great theories and great sermons and stuff like that you got to check it with the cross reference it with the Bible amen because amen. if you don't you will be swept away into whatever is coming down the pipeline very soon that's right and uh, just our natural instincts if we they kick in if we yes. we're just gonna go with the flow we're gonna go with the flow so, what's easy what everybody yeah. else is doing and and our world right now is is in, in, a, in a 
dire situation, um, but it's only going to get worse and people are going to start looking for someone and we um, find that the Bible is, is, is our guide and, and Jesus is the one we need to worship, especially um, every time we come together on the Sabbath day. I just want to leave you with this verse. Mm -hmm. It's 1 John 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. It says, For this is the love of God, Amen. that we keep His commandments. Mm. And His commandments are not burdensome. They're not. So in that context, if you're keeping the commandments and it feels burdensome, it's not being done correctly. Mm -hmm. How do you make the commandments not burdensome in your life? I think the only way I can do that is by, by asking Jesus to show me what is it that He wants me to do. Um, anytime I think I know how to do something or keep something, I mess up. But when I come to Him and I rest upon Him, He shows me. And what He does basically is He changes my heart so that I then have a, a joy in doing what He asks me to do. Mm. And it doesn't seem like I'm missing out on anything. I'm really not. <laughs> Remember what we read in Isaiah 65 verse 17. Um, Isaiah 66 verse 22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the mm. Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. Mm. And then Second Peter 3.13, I know I said last verse a little bit ago, but here, here we go. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven mm. and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Mm. Beautiful. Thanks again for joining us. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Amen. We thank you for creation. Mm -hmm. We thank you how that all pointed to the Sabbath. We thank you for the Sabbath that we have in our own lives, and we just ask that you would help us to keep it, not in a burdensome way, Amen. not in a legalistic way, but... Help us to keep it in a way to honor our friendship and relationship with you. Amen. Thank you so much for putting us, uh, putting this stopgap in our lives that we can just pause from everything, the world and everything going on there, and that we can just be there, Amen. that moment of quietude and that moment of, of goodness mm -hmm. with you. We, we ask that you would help us to share that gift with others as well and we can't wait for that day coming soon in which we're going to get to celebrate sabbath with you Amen. in a new heavens and a new mm -hmm. earth mm -hmm. uh, until that day we just ask that you guide and go with us this next week uh, keep us safe well and healthy in jesus name amen amen well Thanks again for joining us yes. here for this great lesson. And uh, we hope to see you here again next week. Amen. If you're finding this uh, in the future, uh, we've got a bunch of great lessons. Just go uh, to our videos and you can kind of look through the subsections and you'll find some great content. Uh, like, sub subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to get notifications every time we upload something. Take care and happy Sabbath. <laughs>